Hey Lucky Campers, welcome back to Fun Physical Science Fridays. We're glad to see that you've come back to learn with us. This week, you'll learn to differentiate between physical and chemical changes and analyze from the experiments what the results of physical and chemical changes are. Today, we're going to be doing some fun little experiments in your very own kitchen. That's right, chemistry doesn't just have to take place in the laboratory. You can even do it in your own home. Be sure to follow along with the worksheet provided and write down those observations. Let's dive into some of these experiments and see if you have what it takes to become a kitchen chemist. Also, be sure to wear a lab coat and safety goggles. We're training the apron for a lab coat. There might be some potentially dangerous chemicals that could splash in your eyes too in some experiments, so be sure to be wearing the proper protection at all times. Also, make sure to have adult supervision. Every good chef has a sous chef to be their second in command, and your parents can be just that. Now, let's get started. So first, we'll start off by making a salad. The first dish in any kitchen should be simple, yet elegant. You may think that salads have nothing to do with chemistry, but it surprisingly does, as you'll see here. I've got some lettuce, grapes, carrots, salt and pepper, and last of all, ranch dressing. I like to have a little bit of everything in my salad, so let's get started. So, now we're going to mix it all up with these utensils. Alright, now that we have the final product, what do you think this was? A physical or a chemical change? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. So put down on your worksheet what do you think it is. All right, so it's a physical change. The reason that the salad is a physical change is because all the components can be taken back out, even after mixing them all together. The ingredients, while all covered in sauce, can be wiped off, thus converting it back into its original state. The lettuce can also be separated from the grapes and the carrots and so on. But what does this all mean in terms of chemistry? A physical change is where the physical properties of a substance, like its size or shape, are altered. It can be a physical change even if the state of matter changes, like from a liquid to a gas. In the case of the salad, we added more components, making it larger and more colorful. A physical change can also be reversible. Even though we made a salad with all these components, we were able to take them back out again. Now that I've shown you an example of a physical change, I'll pass it on to Alex, who's gonna show you an even cooler change. Thanks for that, Amber. My name is Alex, and I can't wait to get things started with you all. You've seen from Amber all the different kinds of physical changes. But what if I told you that there's more than just a physical change that can change objects? There's also a thing known as a chemical change. This new object is known as the product. Unlike a physical change, most chemical changes are not reversible, meaning that you can't go from the product to the reactant, which is known as your starting material. So for our experiment today, we're gonna to be showcasing baking soda and vinegar. Let's see if you can become a kitchen chemist just like me. I wanna make both Albert Einstein and Gordon Ramsay proud. So, before we get started onto our experiment, we gotta go through some safety procedures face first. Safety should always come first in anything. Before we get started on this, make sure to be, be make sure to be in an open environment. Don't be in a place where everything's all cluttered and it's all busy. You wanna be outside preferably. 
Also, make sure to have some protective eyewear. As you can see here, I have some safety goggles for my face in case the reaction explodes, on explodes onto my face. The first thing we're gonna do is get some baking soda. Since my Ziploc bag is bigger than yours, I'm going to use double the amount that you should put. You should put about one tablespoon in your Ziploc bag if you have a small one. But if you have a big one like me, you might wanna put double the amount, which is two. So we have one there. Next, we want to pour the vinegar. And before and after, right after we pour it, we want to close it immediately. Make sure to shake the bag up very quickly. Whoa, the bag is expanding and the liquid is turning all bright white. What do you think happened here? Do you think it's a physical or a chemical change? If you thought that this was a chemical change, then you're right. A chemical change happened here because the baking soda is a base and the vinegar is an acid. When you have an acid, acid substance and a basic substance, you create a chemical change. That's going to do it for me. I hope you all learned from my experiment that even if things may look like a physical change, it can actually be a chemical change. I'm now going to pass it over to Ariel, where she's going to be doing even some more cool experiments for you all to enjoy. She's going to be giving you the dessert portion of our kitchen chemistry. Thanks, Alex. Now, at this point in the video, you've already seen one pretty obvious physical change and one pretty obvious chemical change. But this experiment I'm about to do for you might be a little bit trickier. But I want you to decide whether it's a physical change or a chemical change. Alright, now to start this experiment, what you want to do is you want to pour out your acetone into the container. Just like that. Then I want you to take one of your styrofoam cups and put it in the container right on top of the ice stone. And I want you to use your hand just to hold it down. Don't push it down, just kind of hold it in place. And this reaction happens super, super quickly. If you guys will come up here, I'll show you what's happening. Now, if you guys look at it, you can actually see very small bubbles forming around the styrofoam cup. And let's give it about 10 seconds and I'll show you what happened. So one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Would you look at that? After just 10 seconds, the styrofoam was basically liquidized. So, I want you guys to tell me, what do you think it is? What happened? Was this a physical change or a chemical change? I'll give you some time to think. Now this reaction was actually a physical change. Shocking, right? Those bubbles that you saw that started forming as soon as we put the cup down, those were actually the bubbles that were trapped in the styrofoam cup that were released whenever it started melting. Not the bubbles that you would typically uh, see at the start of a chemical reaction. So whenever a phase change happens like this, when a solid basically becomes something like a liquid, it's not exactly a chemical change. It's a physical change because no new products were created. And actually, you could reform this little mush of styrofoam back into a cup. It would just be really hard. And if you wait long enough for the acetone to melt, like we did with this cup, then it actually hardens back into a styrofoam texture. Now, did we fool you with any of these experiments? Well, it only gets trickier from here. There are more challenging experiments in the Kitchen Chemistry Cookbook, if you're up for it. Now we want to challenge you to decide if each of those experiments are going to be a physical change or a chemical change. And if you stick around, we can actually show you some clips of the products that you might get if you follow uh, particular recipes in the cookbook.
Now, as a final note, there are going to be some polls and videos that we post on Facebook throughout the day if you guys want to keep up with us. And as a reward for all of your hard work, feel free to eat some of your experiments. Now, thank you guys for following along with us and make sure to join us for the Q&A portion of the day. Do your best in answering the questions, follow the instructions, stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you guys in a bit. And as the chefs would say, let's get this bread.